Welcome adventure fans to another episode of the History of RuneScape Quests, a series in which I, Vimoria, revisit some of the exciting quests from the history of this game that we all love, in order to allow older players a chance to remember the good old days, and allow new players a quick primer on quests that they might not have gotten to yet. In this video, we'll be looking at Druidic Ritual, Lost City, Witch's House, Merlin's Crystal, and then finally Hero's Quest. All of these were released on the 27th of February 2002 to coincide with the release of the new membership program. Give the video a like and let's get started. Druidic Ritual was the quest that introduced the players to the brand new Herblore skill and was originally needed before any Herblore experience could ever be earned. This was reworked in 2012 though to slightly update the quest and remove the need for it to be completed in order to gain experience. Both versions follow the same basic premise of obtaining ingredients to use in a potion, but what these potions are for is different in each version. In 2002, the players collected various animal meats for a druid named Sanfew. In 2012, the potion being created is a potion of imbalance, which uses ingredients that involve a bit more work and which the druid Quagameeks hopes will attract the attention of Guffix, who might see fit to help them with the encroaching troll invasion from the northwest. Quagameeks is the starting NPC for both versions, and he can be found in Tavoli. For a review, both versions of the quest do what they need to do, that being the introduction of the Herblore skill. It introduces the basic gameplay loop of finding resources and mixing potions. It's a bit simplistic, sure, but it's fine for what it is. Lost City is the first quest in the Fairy series of quests, and has you helping out a bunch of adventurers to find their way to the city of Xanaris, a city of magic that exists on Gilinor's moon. You start the quest by finding the adventurers at their campsite in the Lumbridge Swamps. The majority of the group refuse to say anything particular about what they're doing out here, but the warrior, being the dumbest, lets slip that they're looking for Xanaris, a city rumoured to hold many riches and treasures. The only thing is that the party cannot find the tree that the stupid leprechaun's hiding in. Pertinent information indeed, Mr. Warrior. After locating the leprechaun tree by finding the only one marked chop swamp tree instead of chop down swamp tree, a very important difference, a little fey folk named Seamus will pop out and tell you how to travel to Xanaris. It requires the use of a magical item called a Draman Staff, which is made out of wood cut from a tree inside of the Entrana dungeon, which must be taken to a portal within one of the swamp huts. Entrana is an island belonging to a group of Saradominus monks who have taken a vow of peace, meaning that no weapons, armour, runes, or anything else combat-y can be carried there. The monks will expel you if you're found with anything like that. With this in mind, you can take the raw resources needed to make weapons, like wood, bowstrings, and arrow parts there, so loophole. Once on the island, you enter into the dungeon, find the Draman tree, and pacify the spirit possessing it in combat. Finally, you cut a log from the tree and fashion it into a staff. If you enter this specific hut while wielding the staff, you'll be transported to Xanaris and the quest is completed. As a review, I really like this quest, and it has some major rewards for the player, like the random ability to wield dragon longswords and daggers, as well as allowing you access to the cosmic altar, which you can use to craft cosmic runes, and it opens up a new Slayer Master, which was a skill added on this same day. It also starts off the Fairy questline, which is one of my favourites, and one that I'm really excited to revisit as I get further along with this series, as I've not really gone back to it, but I remember loving it. Witch's House is a short quest in which you help out a boy named Harvey, south of Tavoli, who has accidentally kicked his ball into a nearby garden that just happens to belong to a surly witch named Nora. What follows is a series of strange little puzzles that slowly whittle away the defences that have been installed by Dr. Odenstein, the guy responsible for making Ernest a chicken. You can find the video in which I talk about that quest up in the corner here. Eventually, after a bit of stealth, you find the ball hidden in a shed. Upon trying to retrieve it, you are attacked by a quote, experiment, which gets increasingly more difficult as you kill its various forms. Once this is done, however, you can take the ball and return it to Harvey for a quest complete screen. I remember hating this one when I first did it, due to the forced stealth section, which I feel is out of place in a fundamentally point-and-click, really clunky game like RuneScape, 
Uh, you say that with love, but RuneScape is clunky. Revisiting this quest in 2022, though, I have to say that I do kind of like it. It has a bit of a bottle episode vibe to it, in that it isn't really connected to anything else in the world, aside from a few references, but it's fun enough. The next one to talk about, then, is Merlin's Crystal, which is the first in the Camelot series of quests. You start it by talking to actual King Arthur in actual Gilinorian Camelot, and asking if you can join the actual Knights of the Round Table. Artie says you can, but only after a quest has been completed, and he knows just the one. Their court wizard Merlin has been trapped inside a magical crystal, and you must free him. He suggests talking to some of the other knights for ideas. Sir Gawain will suggest that Morgan Le Fay might have the means to release Merlin, as she was the one who put him there in the first place. However, she lives in Keep Le Fay, which is apparently nigh impenetrable. Lancelot says the fortress is heavily guarded, but receives supplies via a boat, which might be a way in. You follow this lead up with a Kaffir bee merchant named Arhain, who reveals he is the one who transports shipments to Keep Le Fay, but that you are definitely not getting in. You proceed to get in almost immediately by smuggling yourself inside a crate, and you get dropped off inside the keep. While exploring the fortress, you encounter a disgraced knight known as Sir Mordred, who will start a fight with you because, you know, you're intruding, you're not meant to be there. Once he's defeated though, Morgan will arrive and beg you to spare her son, that being Mordred. In exchange, she will detail how to release Merlin, which requires some bat wings dropped by most bats, a black candle, which can be obtained by trading a bucket of wax to the Caffabee candle maker, the mystical sword Excalibur, which is currently guarded by a being known as the Lady of the Lake, and some magic words. The magic words are found easily enough by reading them from a Chaos Altar in Varrock, and the bat wings and black candle are also quite easy to get. After finding the Lady of the Lake and asking her about Excalibur, she says that she has it, but before she will give it to you, you must pass a test, and she asks you to start this test by travelling to the jewellery store in Port Sarum. Once there, you are approached by a beggar asking for food. If you give him something like bread from the nearby food shop, then he will reveal that he is in fact, drumroll, the Lady of the Lake. What a twist. And he was testing your character. Satisfied, the Lady of the Lake will give you the sword. Now with all of this sorted, it's time to free Merlin. You smash a stone, free him, and are granted admittance to the actual knights of the actual round table. So I've got a lot to say here. The quest is fine, but I do find the idea of actual Arthurian characters being included in RuneScape is kind of jarring and a bit on the nose. I spend a lot of my time world building for my D&D games, so I'm aware that your game is only as good as the inspiration, however, I feel it's generally best to kind of rework or maybe reskin the things that give you inspiration so that they fit into the world better. Jagex did not do that here. It's literally just King Arthur, Merlin, Morgan, and the knights in RuneScape with minimal effort to weave them into the world. Arthur makes mention of actual real-life England, and it's just sort of, like, why though? How hard could it have been to rework Arthur so that he's a worshipper of Saradomen and was born on Gilinor? I think everyone would already get the reference, it doesn't need to be so explicit, and it doesn't need to kind of break the world a little bit. Finally then, we're on to Hero's Quest, which is on paper a simple adventure that soon becomes more complicated. The quest has you collecting free items in order to be granted access to the Heroes Guild, a place for famous heroes like Sir Owen, Linda, and Ozan, who are free heroes that we'll explore later on down the line. To enter, you are told that you must find free items a feather from the Entrana Firebird, a cooked lava eel, and a Master Thief's armband. Let's start with the feather. The High Priest of Entrana will tell you a legend about the Firebird's mere touch being enough to burn human flesh, but that a legend of a hero named Kimura had her using a pair of magical gloves, stolen from the Queen of Ice, in order to catch the Firebird and tame it. These gloves can be dropped by fighting the Queen of Ice in her lair underneath White Wolf Mountain after travelling through a small maze. With the gloves on, you can simply kill the Firebird on Entrana and pick up one of its feathers. For the Lava Eel, you speak to Geraint of the fishing shop in Port Sarum, who says that in order to catch Lava Eels, you need a Lava Proof Line, which can be achieved by soaking a regular fishing line in blemish oil, which is made via the Herb Law skill. Once this is done, you can catch a Lava Eel in the Taverly Dungeon or the Lava Maze, cook it, and then hand it in. 
Simple enough. Finally, the Master Thief's Armband, which has you interacting with either Katrine or Straven from the Shield of Arrow of Quest. Again, that video is linked up in the corner here. This can be completed solo or with a friend, but we'll presume a solo run through. Katrine of the Black Arm Gang will offer up her armband in exchange for the candlesticks from the mansion of the Pirate King, Scarface Pete, who has a heavily secured manor on Brimhaven. The nearby gang fill you in on how they've recently forged some documents for a rogue black knight who was soon to be hired by the pirate lord that they have recently captured. You can assume the black knight's identity by wearing a full suit of black battle armour, infiltrate the mansion, and then steal the lord's candlesticks. Katrine will give you her armband once the candlesticks are given to her. The phoenix gang plays out sort of the same as you infiltrate the mansion to obtain the candlesticks for Straven, but there is less of an organised plan and a bit more of your character bluffing to get into the mansion. Either way, once all three items are acquired, you can return them to Akietes, the lady outside the guild who will allow you access, and that is quest complete. Review-wise, I think this quest has some good potential, but it did fall a bit flat in certain ways. I really liked the nod to historical lore with Kimura and the Firebird. Having legends can really help to build out a world and give it a sense of existence, but the lava eel bit falls a bit flat, and only one half of the armband bit is actually interesting. Having the whole plan of assuming the identity of a Black Knight is fun, and it showed that the Black Arm Gang are competent and they're organised. The Phoenix Gang version doesn't have this plan and just feels a bit lacklustre. If it were me designing this quest, I'd have probably had the Phoenix's focus on an entirely different item or plan, which would be properly fleshed out so that the players had a choice in which they wanted to pursue. And that is it for the video, so I hope you enjoyed our little shared journey down memory lane. If you liked the video, then please give it a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Please also feel free to leave a comment about any other bits of RuneScape lore that you feel is out of place or sloppily included in the game. As a caveat, you can't just say the King Arthur stuff. I've already said it, and that won't count. Until next time, I've been Vimoria. Happy questing.